What is going on, rattlers? So, you know, Florida has the most invasive reptile species anywhere else in the country, possibly anywhere else in the world. There's a lot of reasons why they're here, but the media will tell you that people bought them as pets and then released those pets in the wild, which is absolutely 100% not true. There's a lot of reasons why these invasive reptiles are here, but you know, we all know about the famous invasive species like the pythons and the Everglades, but there's a lot of reptile species that are invasive to Florida that you probably didn't know were actually invasive. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. So probably the most common invasive species here in Florida is that guy right over there. So these brown anoles are everywhere and therefore, again, they're one of the most common and unknown of all the Florida invasive reptiles. Everybody sees the native green anoles and just assumes that that's what this is, but it's not. These are actually invasive and they're native to Cuba and the Bahamas, but they can be found all over Florida and all the way across to Texas. And there's even been sightings in Hawaii and Southern California. The brown anoles introduction to the United States can be traced back to the early 1970s. They came in as stowaways on cargo ships. These guys are capable of expanding their range very quickly and when they do, they achieve a really high population density because they are so prolific. Once they get established, they outcompete native lizard species, namely, again, the green anole which used to have domain over really everywhere here in Florida. But because they have been increasingly outcompeted, they have been forced into the treetops and they have now become canopy lizards. You can still see green anoles around, but when I was a kid, green anoles were all you saw and they were everywhere. And now I'm lucky to see one or two every time I come down here. And one of the most commonly seen invasive species here in South Florida, they really are everywhere now, are those guys over there. Those are green iguanas. Green iguanas, seriously, they're one of the most visible invasive species in South Florida. They are native to Central America, so in South Florida, they really aren't that far from their natural range. They aren't really that detrimental to the local environment, but mostly they just do what iguanas do and lay around in the sun. And here in South Florida, they are the new squirrels in parks around here. One of the reasons they are so visible is, of course, their size. Male iguanas can reach over five feet in length and weigh up to 17 pounds. Females can also reach five feet in length, but usually don't exceed seven pounds. The females do dig egg chambers and lay clutches anywhere from 14 to 76 eggs. So they are incredibly prolific, and once they get established, there is no getting rid of them. Not only that, but green iguanas can live up to 10 years in the wild, so they are a very successful species. But they can't really survive above that frost line in central Florida, so they're not really going to migrate any further north than here in south Florida. So to illustrate how common iguanas are, we just had breakfast at this Denny's. Clint is over here filming that one over there. But then there's a huge male sitting right over here. There's one crossing the parking lot over here. There's one right there. Holy cow. Two right there. Three, oh, one, two, three, Jeez, four, gorgeous. five. There were six over there. There's just iguanas all over this area, right here in downtown Miami. Apparently they love the Denny's. Green iguanas were first reported in Florida in Key Biscayne along Miami-Dade County's southeastern coast. They are so numerous now that 3,169 documented lizard sightings occurred from May 1992 through December 2006 from just south of Lake Okeechobee to Key West. That is a lot of invasive lizards. While nobody's counting them today, it's a fair guess that there are easily that many on Key Biscayne alone. So how many do we see just right here behind the Denny's here in the middle of like urban Miami there's a big male sitting over there on that shore next to those ibises. So we just saw 10, 11, 12. I'd say like 15. Huge iguanas right here in the middle of downtown Miami. So on this patio here, that little dude over there, 
that's a curly-tailed lizard. And curly-tailed lizards can be easily identified by their little curled tails. But the species is also famous for its ability to eat just about anything, including greasy human food. For instance, one especially bloated lizard that researchers had... Well, at first it was assumed that the lizard was gravid or pregnant, but... Later tests showed that it was actually constipated with a ball of poop that amounted to 80% of its body weight. That curly tail lizard now holds the record for the largest mass of poop ever discovered in a living animal. Hey listen, you guys tune in for a reason and well, now you know who the most celebrated pooper is not only in the reptile world, but in all the animal kingdom. So this celebrated pooper is endemic to the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos, Cuba, the Cayman Islands, Haiti, Dominican Republic, that's where I first saw them. So we're not too far away from their native range here in South Florida. And according to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, curly-tailed lizards first arrived here when they escaped from a zoo in 1935. But that single event is not responsible for the lizard's now booming population here in Florida. About a decade after the zoo incident in the 1940s, a sugarcane farmer on Palm Beach released 40 curly-tailed lizards to eradicate the bugs on his farm. It was a totally ineffective method of pest control, and by 1968, the loose lizards had permanently set up shop. So here in the suburban backyard in Miami is one of the other most common invasive lizards you can see here. That is the brown basilisk. The brown basilisk, they're also known as striped basilisks. These basilisk lizards are native to Mexico, Central America, and the northern part of Colombia. And according to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, they arrived here right about 1976. Like a lot of the invasive reptiles here in Florida, they were brought here as stowaways on tropical plant imports. Basilisks eat a lot of insects, including worms, grasshoppers, and crickets, but they will also eat small lizards. Like for instance, they eat a lot of the invasive brown anoles. And out of all the invasive reptiles here in Florida, basilisks seem to have the least effect on native wildlife. They are prolific and can reach sexual maturity at less than a year of age. And during the wet season, it has been estimated that hatchlings may reach sexual maturity in as little as three months. Females can lay between three to 12 eggs from May to August and they pick secluded moisture retaining nesting sites, which essentially People's gardens are a perfect nesting site for these lizards. So this little guy is a Mediterranean gecko. Now Florida is home to only one native gecko, the Florida reef gecko. But it has at least 10 different introduced gecko species, which were introduced as hitchhikers in cargo from the plant import companies. They were first documented in Florida in 1910. And this Mediterranean gecko is an old world species that is common in Southern Europe and Northern Africa but it's been introduced to many tropical areas around the world. These geckos eat a lot of nuisance insects, and they're seen on the walls of basically every building here in South Florida. So another commonly seen lizard around the Miami area is the red-headed agama. The red-headed agamas can be found in most parts of Africa, such as Tanzania and Kenya, but the ones found in this part of Florida are the West African variety. And due to the popularity of Spider-Man, demand for these lizards skyrocketed. And they first debuted in South Florida in 1976. They're actually a beneficial lizard, and they rarely venture away from human habitation. And that's a good thing, because they eat a lot of nuisance insects. Anything that they think that they can make a meal out of, they usually eat. And again, it's usually human garbage, unfortunately and nuisance insects. All right guys, so right up at the top of this coconut palm here in South Florida is one of the most beautiful of all of the invasive reptiles found here in South Florida. That is a giant day gecko. Giant day gecko is in the genus Felsuma. And this one is the Madagascar giant day gecko, or Felsuma grandis. It's native to northern Madagascar, but it is now established here in South Florida. It's also established on some of the Caribbean islands, and it's also established on Hawaii. These guys were first sighted in South Florida in the late 90s. But breeding populations were only known from Monroe County in the Florida Keys until about 2017. And then they were spotted on the mainland around Miami. So these giant day geckos do very little damage to the local flora and fauna. These guys eat a lot of insects and they will also eat soft rotten fruit. And they also like to lick honey. 
And I know of several people around Miami who have these in their yard, and they will literally put honey out on the tree limbs just to feed their wild day geckos. You know, pet owners are often demonized for causing this problem with invasive reptiles down here, but the majority of them actually came into the state through plant imports. And reptiles aren't the only invasive species down here. All the waterways of South Florida are filthy with invasive fish, and as a matter of fact, the FWC down here in Florida deliberately released peacock bass into the waterways here in South Florida just to attract the fishing dollar. But unfortunately, politicians will demonize pet owners like us for causing this problem down here, and if a politician thus says it, and the press then prints what the politician says, well, it's in print and therefore it automatically becomes true. It's really sad, but pet owners did not cause this problem down here. And on the other hand, most of the reptile species that are invasive here are not doing any damage to the local ecosystem whatsoever. But I will tell you what invasive species is the most damaging, destructive, and dangerous down here in South Florida. That's right the domestic house cat is doing more damage to the local ecosystem, not only here in Florida, but literally all over the world. Comment below and let me know why you think politicians won't touch that one with a 10 foot pole. So guys, thanks for watching and a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and my sponsors who make this channel possible. So until the next reptile adventure guys, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession and rattle on.